Amen. amen. If you haven't, say amen. amen. Everybody that just said amen. amen. I need y'all to help me sing. Y'all been skating by on me all day. Today. And I've been sweating up here like a hog. Some of y'all lips ain't moved all certain. Yeah, I'm talking to you, amen. In Jesus' name, all right, amen. There's a happy land I promise over in the great beyond. Where the Savior worship, the glory shall. Where the sword men shall and live on forevermore. And everybody, yeah. Come on, church, and everybody. It is a tragic situation to be in. 
when a Christian forget the benefits they have with God on their side. I understand that life holds some uncertainty and the mundane shores of life seem to somehow beat against us like the waves upon Myrtle Beach. But don't you dare forget about the benefit of having God on your side. Because when you appreciate the benefit of knowing that even in the midst of my trouble, well, yeah. even in the midst of my challenges, hey, and hey. even in the midst of my dark, deep hey, issues, hey. God is still with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for that, I encourage you, don't forget how good God is. Yes, and don't forget to no good without God. Right. I'm truly blessed and thankful and a little nervous and all those good things because I received a verbal invitation to be with you all on today. I know I am a student of the word and I am privileged to be on the roster in the panel with these gladiators of the gospel. Therefore, I'm reminded what Paul encouraged his young son. Let no man despise yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But be ye an example yeah. of the believer. Yeah, so I right. stand before you, not on my own intuition. Uh -huh. right. I stand before you as an example to show you God can use anybody. Yeah. Because if you look in the archives of my life and you flip through the pages and you pull out a file that says, was there ever a time that you uh, 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 failed to trust in God? Was there ever a time that you, you was out on the street and doing things that you shouldn't do? You will find that, that archive to be true. But God has rendered to me an opportunity to be delivered. And for that, I am thankful. I won't tarry long. I encourage you to apprehend a copy of God's holy and divine word. And those that are visiting with us, I want you to know you're in the right place at the right time. We are a Bible preaching and teaching church. I believe it's in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, it says, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica. And that they received their word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things are so. The only way we're going to know what thus says the Lord unless we search the scriptures. Now, you may have your cellular devices and your iPads, and I know you're used to using it for technology, but this afternoon I encourage you to use it for spirituality. No need to scroll on Facebook to see who's out of service. No need to uh, send a text message to somebody talking about you got down on space later. There's no need for that. I need your attention on what thus says the Lord. Join up with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Beginning at verse number 38. And I will read verse 38 and 39. So sail with me to Acts chapter 8. And we will let down our anchors of understanding at verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. And the text read, So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. The subject that has been delivered to me, and I will be obedient to that which has been uh, in, uh, given to me by instructions. Healing water for a sin curse soaked. All right now, boy. Healing water for a sin curse soaked. In reading the entire chapter of Acts chapter 8, you will come to understand this man, Philip. This preaching evangelist was in a tremendous revival meeting in the city of Samaria. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 13, Paul Philip was one of the seven men chosen by the twelve and the multitude of disciples to become a minister for the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
concerning the Lord's church, according to Acts chapter 6. I'm just giving you Philip bio. Is that all right? Can, can I give you his bio? Because it's very important that you understand uh, who this, this, this young evangelist is and who this unit is. Because you will come to understand you have a preacher in an honest sinner. Philip was a man of good reputation, and he was full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. He was not one of the apostles. He was not even one of the twelve. Right. But he was a man ordained in the church at Jerusalem to take care of the ministry of tables, the physical necessities and surrounding the attendant of the congregation. I'm still giving you his Bible. Right. And in the midst of this great revival, the angel of the Lord spake to him, said, Leave this city and this great outpouring of presence of the Spirit of God upon the people and go into the desert and to a place that I will show thee. What an amazing and inapplicable thing that God has asked this creature to do. For we walk by faith and not by sight, which I believe that's what was pondering in Philip's mind. Not that we are able to explain, but God can. Not that one knoweth, but he knows. So Philip, listening to the voice of an angel, made his way into the loneliness and stillness of the desert. Nothing there but the far away stretches of sand and emptiness of the solitude and stillness of a vast expanding desert. Standing there alone by the side of the road. But God has a purpose for him. Always he does, when he does, and the way God does is up to God. We just follow God's plan and being in the right place at the right time sometimes cause confusion because we always want to get in God's business. And that if we spend more time minding our own business and we can focus on what God will have for us to know and we'll see that we're in the right place at the right time. Let me encourage you visitors that are not members of the body of Christ. You are in the right place at the right time. I, I, don't, I didn't see no car broken down outside of the building and you're waiting on roadside assistance to come in and help you out. No, you are here by God's providence. Therefore, you should take advantage of the opportunity that you have, even if you feel like you're standing alone in the midst of a desert. God still has a purpose for you being there. In verse number 26 of Acts chapter 8, as we get now into our story, now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert. Understand that. You can underline it. You can circle it. You can highlight it. But I want you to remember the desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man Ethiopian, the, e the eunuch of great authority, under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem. Now we see this great meeting between Philip and the eunuch. God has already a uh, purpose for this meeting to take place. Yes, it says, starts out by saying, Behold, and the sight began to take form and shape as it drew near to him. Who is this man? Philip was pondering in his heart and his mind. And the verses immediately follow the scribe here. First of all, he's described as a eunuch. Well, what is a eunuch, Brother Robinson? One of the attendant evils or oriented Harlem was to enter into the presence of a eunuch. What do you mean? The eunuch was a victim of a terrible institute. He was an estimated man that was dry branch and he was withered limb, no hope of prosperity or family or issues. But he was a great man. He is described as a man of great authority under Candace the Queen in the Ethiopians, who had charge over her treasure. So this man had some issues, but he had a position. Let me mind you, just because you get blessed on your job, and you get a promotion on your job, or you get blessed with a new house, or things are working out with your kids and everything, you can still have issues. Every time you reach the level of uh, a spiritual, uh, a level that you need to be at, where God can really use you, it means that you got some things that you need to work on and examine yourself as you continue to grow and be what God will have for you to be. We ain't made it there yet, church, but we're still striving to do what God will have for us to do. This man had a profession and he had issues and he had a position. His position is that he's in the desert. Philip found this man in the desert. Verse 28 says, why was returning and sitting in his chariot take this out. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. The spirit said to Philip, 
go near and take over this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet of Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? Let me pause there. That is a lot of the problems now that we have that folks are saying a lot of things but don't understand what they're reading. Therefore, it affects the fact of their understanding in that dialogue and in that, in their, in the, in the way they comprehend God's word because you have the number of nations that are teaching false doctrine and therefore when they come into the body, they need to be taught with the right understanding so they would know what thus says the Lord and what I need to do in obeying the truth. Am I right about it? Verse 29, says, then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? Let me mind you this. In that time, rabbis and priests taught men how to read out loud. So this man was reading out loud, but without any understanding. I'm at verse 31. And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter. And he was a lamb before his shear is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And in humiliation his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generations for his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch was reading Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and 8. Verse 34 says, so the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this prophet say this man is? And is he talking about himself or he's talking about the other man? The reason why the eunuch wanted to investigate because it seems like whoever this man is, got, we got some things in common. We, we got some similarities. And we, I, I can see myself in this man. Therefore, a eunuch has is it, is, is, has the natural uh, of a eunuch is included as who was born with physical defect. But they were also comprised those who are born with no real desire for marriage or sex. Forced eunuchs are those who have been concentrated uh, for whatever reason. Eunuchs were usually to be used as servant and slaves who have been concentrated in order to make them reliable servants of royal court, whether physical access or to the ruler. Therefore, the eunuch was seeing some things about this man that really puzzled him. He started to feel compassion. He, he started to want to know, wait a minute. I, I feel like this man, whoever I'm reading about, but I still don't have the right understanding. In verse 35, then Philip, Peter, Philip opened up his mouth and began to uh, start at the scripture and preach Jesus unto him. Yes, yeah. 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 He started at the same text. Yeah. 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 I'm going to slow it down just a little yeah. bit. Because I need to get to where I am. See, church, what we got to understand is it wasn't by coincidence well, come on. that this man was reading no, 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 no. the prophet of Isaiah. No, no, no. See, it's so important that instead of looking at somebody else trying to measure your stuff up to them, uh -huh. you ought to do like the eunuch did and start uh -huh. looking at the word of God. Uh -huh. Because you're going to see some similarities about your problems and your issues. Therefore, when Philip taught this man, he taught this man in a way that it made some comparisons of conviction. The preacher used the inspired scripture to preach Jesus to the eunuch, the sin-bearing Messiah. The text was Isaiah chapter 53, who is a prophetic, that is a prophetic statement of suffering of the Messiah. Jesus was the topic of discussion. How our Lord and our Savior was rejected by men. The unit failed the same way in his life. Listen to this. The Philip taught the unit about Jesus, according to Isaiah 53, how Jesus was acquitted with grief. The unit could re also relate to the same condition. How the people hid their face from our Lord and our Savior and was despised, none esteemed in him. The unit at this point probably started to shed a few tears. Philip preached how Christ was stricken and smitten and afflicted and wounded for our transgressions. The unit at this point began to be pricked in his 
his heart. Philip taught him about how Jesus Christ was led to the cross as a lamb to slaughter, and Jesus' freedom and justice was taken away from him without speaking one mumbling word. Jesus was an innocent man who suffered and died for the sins of the world and was buried and rose again, and all the salvation is in Christ Jesus, and that he taught this man, the unit, that you must be buried with Jesus, him in the word of the grave of baptism. Therefore, when you get to verse 38, now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see here is some water. What hinders me to be baptized? See, when you've been taught the gospel, and you've been taught what Jesus did for you, we don't need to just stop with the one church. Let's talk about what Jesus did for me. Let's talk about he suffered for my sins, because what we need to do is make some comparisons and some emotional comparisons and some convictions for us to really understand what am I obeying? Well, I really obey. This water. Why this water? What hinders me? Verse 36 said, they went down the road and they came to some water. What was so significant about this water? This water can't be compared to the water they hear name in 2 Kings chapter 5 when Elijah told him to go and wash seven times in the water of Jordan of the river and his flesh was restored. No, 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 no. That was water unto obedience. Well, what about the water, uh, Brother Robinson, that was in the pool of Bethesda? No. In John chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, how the people that were sick stood by waiting for the angel to go down at a certain time in the pool to stir up the waters. And whoever stepped in first after stirring up the water was made well of whatever disease they had. No, that was water unto restoration. All right, now. But this water in verse number 36 was water unto salvation. He said, what hinders me yes, from being baptized? Here is some water. <laughs> Come on, preacher. This water wasn't just any water. Well, well, well. Now come to your house. I don't expect you to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Take a cup and, Brother Rossi, I've been in a minute and come out the bathroom with a cup of water in here. First of all, I'm going to ask you, why did you bring my water out your bathroom? And it better be some uh, filtration technology system set up in there where it really pours out some clean water. Because I'm going to say, this is some water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why did the unit ask the question, what hinders me from being baptized? as if he needed special permission to enter into the water. We must understand that people was always denying the unit access to enter into certain places because of the status and the condition. The unit has become a custom to being turned around at the front door. The, the Jews would not allow eunuchs to enter into holy places because they were identified as being cursed people. And I find this to be true according to Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1 says, He who is excumulated uh, and cursing and uh, uh, mutilation shall not enter into the assembly of the Lord. Yeah. Understand this. There was curse. Yes, sir. They couldn't enter into holy places. They couldn't enter into fellowship places. Can you imagine somebody getting up this morning, getting dressed, putting their Sunday suit on, their Sunday best on, whatever you want to call it, getting in their vehicle, driving to the building, get to the door, and the brother say, you can't enter. Come on, preacher. You've been denied access to enter. This water. He asks Philip, what hinders me from being baptized? Because he was so used to people telling him, you can't enter. But he had a desire to enter. Do you see what's getting ready to unfold? The unit could not go to the gate, but he couldn't go inside the temple. The only way he heard about God 
was from the folks coming out of the assembly. Ah. So whoever we stop at the door, they can't come in. Yeah. The only way they can hear about the Lord is us coming out of it, talking about how good God is and what God has done. But hold it, they still can't enter. Come on, preacher. They can't enter. I got some water. And then I asked this man who preaching to me, what hinders me? As if I need permission. Well, well, well. I can understand why the unit asked the question. What hinders me from being baptized? Because all his life, he was never granted access to enter. Uh -huh. But thank God that Christ died and was buried and rose again. Because now we have access to enter. And the way you enter, Philip told him, is obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Philip is giving this sin cursed soul, granted access to enter. Look at verse 37. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the unit went down into the water. And he baptized and washed his. What was it about the place in the area that this man was found in the power called the desert? Why we had to have this meeting in the desert? Well, Lord, why we couldn't meet on first Sunday fellowship? All right, now. Well, well, Lord, why we couldn't meet at fourth Sunday fellowship? Uh -huh. well, why we couldn't meet at Lewis Street Church of Christ Gospel meeting? All right, now. Well, why we couldn't meet at uh, 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 the brothers meeting on Saturday? Uh, why, why, why we had to meet in the desert? What, what was it about the desert? It interests me that the desert is a place that is dried up. Is a place that is isolated from other forms of land and grows natural habitation. It is very dry with little or no water at all. Nothing really grows there because of the humility. Nothing can even be produced there because of very little water. The desert can be recognized as being a cursed body of land. Matter of fact, geologists call any stationary body of water that resides in the desert living water. The unit's life was just like the desert. The unit is considered to be cursed because they cannot produce like the desert. They are identified as being dried up like the desert. And wait, let, let, me, let me drop this on you. Something was about the desert. Come on, preacher. They can't use you, brother. You're a dried up man uh -huh. in a dried up place. Uh -huh. But they found some water. All right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Free sign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. If God <laughs> allowed this man to meet this preacher in the desert, all right, now. Because he lives, yeah. I can face tomorrow. Yeah. God fixed it for some living yes, war yes, was in the desert. Yeah. The unit man was dried up yeah. at first, but when he obeyed the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ, something came alive yeah. on the inside, yeah. just like the desert. If God supplied the preacher, and if yeah. God supplied the word, yeah. all you gotta do is go forth and teach the of Jesus Christ. I like that. Yes, sir. He would be no longer dry but him. But I'm coming to a close. Y'all have been hard up here, I'm seeing And I got Ella Harris there on the front row. I know I don't stumble, Miss said some words, but I hope y'all just get the point.
in a dry mouth. <laughs> We understand that God saw something living in the inside of this unit. Isn't it a blessing that no matter how dried up your life has ever been, God saw something living in your soul. No matter how many people said you couldn't enter, how many people denied you access? Can I just use a better analogy? You go down to the federal building. Now just because I'm an engineer, don't mean I can go down to the federal building and tell them I need to get in. All right now. I can't take my own work badge and scan it on the side of the building. Because what's going to come up is a red light, meaning you've been denied. Uh -huh. yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This man asked the question, yeah. what hindered me? Uh -huh. The Philip evangelist preached to him. He was great at access. Can you imagine living your whole life Lord Jesus. cursed? Nobody want to fool with you, with your own. Nobody really like you. They just put up with you. Folks don't really want to deal with you, so they use you as servants and slaves. Because you've been cursed. But thank God for cleansing you. That cleans this cursed soul. So when he came up out the water, I know they was reading Isaiah 53. Yeah. But I believe that Philip flipped over to Isaiah 56 right. and encouraged him. Because, see, you need something to rejoice about. Hey, hey, You've been sin cursed all your life. Yeah. Now that you've obeyed the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ, can, can I tell you how good you got in there? Yeah. You, you ain't got to worry about turning you around at the, at the gate and telling you can't come in in the temple and sit among those that are worshiping God. Isaiah 56 says keep justice and do righteous for my salvation it is about to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Watch this verse 3, stay with me now, stay with me do not let the son of the foreign who has joined himself to the Lord speak said, the Lord shall utterly separate me from his people nor let the unit, nor let the unit, nor let the unit say, here I am a dry tree for thus says the Lord oh, to the unit who keep my Sabbath and who has chosen what pleases me and hold fast my covenant and even to them I will give my house and within my walls a place and a name better than those of the sons and the daughters I will give them everlasting name that would not be cut out this unit found something that would never cut them off from God again. All his life he been cut off. But God said because you obeyed the gospel don't matter what they say. Matter of fact you got a better position than they gave you something that was worth you seeking. What I love about the unit, he was putting forth the help of a fine God. He was seeking something. Yes, sir. And when he got there, they said you couldn't come in. With your sin, curse, messed up, jacked up self. Well, well, well. That's what they were saying as he was walking away. That's what folks always say when you turn your back. I can imagine him traveling in the desert. It's hot. Sweat pouring down his head. He got the scroll. Reading Isaiah. 
tears rolling down his face because it's a blessing when you can read about somebody that you can relate to. Oh, right. young creature left a revival to come teach this man the gospel. Got to him and said, what you read, Doc? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I don't understand what I'm reading. Uh -huh. I'm just reading, but I like what I'm reading uh -huh. because I can see myself. He said, come up here and sit. What I love about the story is that, see, Philip had came out of a time where they was persecuting the church. Uh -huh. He was feeling a little low himself. Mm -hmm. So when he was asked to come sit up, there was exhortation uh -huh. that God gave him uh -huh. to do something for God. They stopped by some water after he got through preaching about Christ. Man said, here's water. What hinders me? Now watch this. He said that then. But later on it said he stopped. And commanded for the chariot to stop and stand still. Uh -huh. And they went down to the water. Uh -huh. That lets me know that water had to be traveling. <laughs> All right now. Because he started in one place. Uh -huh. He stood still in another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when he had said, here's some water, what hindered me to enter? Uh -huh. That would be the water. Cleanse his soul. Uh -huh. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Thank God for his word. Amen. It was challenging for me to preach this lesson because for one, I've never preached it before. Right. But I am going to definitely preach it again. Yeah. If there's anybody here that feel like your life has just been dried up, come on now, preacher. Sometimes us as Christians feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Before I obeyed the gospel, I had more money than this. My relationship seemed to work out better than this. There's something about when God really gets a hold of you, stuff starts drying up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. But God has to challenge you yeah. for you to grow. Because he don't want you to stay in the desert. Because when you read the text, Philip went on his way, uh -huh. the Ethiopian went on his. They didn't stay in the desert. That's all right. Some of you are still in the desert. Some of you need somebody to just sit you down, open up the beautiful pages of the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, and teach you about Jesus. Praying that you see yourself. That's why James called it a mirror. You need to see yourself. Everybody need to see yourself in the word of God. You can't see yourself. You need somebody to help you understand. All right. And that's why you're always looking at somebody else talking about their wrong. When you need to look at your own. The unit was cursed in the beginning. But now I see Brother Harris had a woman cleanses his son. He gave me a hog and died. We're going to talk about this too. <laughs> Aren't you glad, every believer that's in the house, that God delivers you out of the desert? And he delivers you not just for you, like my man said, for you to help somebody else. All right, all right, that's right. Those that are not members, you gotta hear the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then you gotta believe just like they do. He believed. That's what I love about it. He was seeking for something. Yeah. Now, he was lost, but he became found. Amen. After that, you got to do something else. Be willing to repent. Yeah. Are you willing to change? Are you going to fall again? Yes, you are. Ask every Christian in here. Yeah. We all have come short of the glory of God. Yes. Yes. But thank God we're able to repent. Yes, Turn around and get our life back on track. After that, you must be willing to confess Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. 
And just like you're going to be willing to be baptized. Yes. You're in a state right now that you need to be delivered out of the desert. Everything around you is dried up. But the only thing ain't dry. All right now. Come on. It's all right now. Amen. Amen. The water that can wash away your sins. That's right. If you are a member of the body of Christ and you feel like it, spiritually you feel dry, empty. You need to be filled again. Amen. You need to be renewed again. Amen. You need to be encouraged again. Amen. We'll do it. Ain't no shame in your game. Amen. Ain't no shame Amen. to come down here Amen. and ask for, ask for, ask for prayer. Amen. Yeah. Because, see, you are needed. Everybody in here is on a design assignment Amen. to bring somebody to Christ. Yeah. It was Philip then. It's the Church of Christ today. Uh -huh. Need to be finding somebody who can yes. bring to Christ. Yes. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. Together we stay in the same picture. What can I wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can be Workshops this year have been designed for all of us. So tomorrow, I know you gotta go, but tomorrow you will be able to attend the workshop that you would like to attend. Brother Mike Williams, one of our deacons here, will be taking a look at a serious issue that's facing our nation right now, especially among African-American males. How do we survive 
with all of the injustice that's going on. Our young men are struggling. They are struggling. But what we need to let them know, brothers, that, that we struggle too with injustice. Uh, and it's, it's, we just need to give them the tools and the mechanism to do that. Brother Skippy Norman is going to be here with us tomorrow, also Stanley Williams, and we'll have some special singing from Purpose, and Brother John Marshall will close out this year's lectureship. Again, we appreciate you so much for coming. We also like, it before I turn it over to Brother Harris for the, for the final words today, we want to remind you that if you need transportation, brothers, sisters and brothers here at McAllen, if you need transportation, you got to call Brother Ware, not in the morning. <laughs> Amen. All right? You need to call him as soon as possible. If not, just touch him on the shoulder today. His number is 541-9523. I also want to say the Christian retreat is right around the corner. You, if you don't have the information, you'll be getting your information on the Christian retreat in Hot Springs. That's the last weekend of October, and we want you to please participate in that activity. Again, we thank you for being here. Brother Harris will come now with the final words of the day and the prayer. We also want to say, before you leave, go down the hall and check out the information that our vendors have. There's information as well as, uh, as I said, Brother, Brother, Brother Stanley is out there and uh, got some nice items for you to participate. There's also Brother Marshall that's running some specials on some of his books. So please, check them out before you leave. Thank you. All of the information about tomorrow's lectures are in the program. If you didn't get one, we have some programs outside. I'm not going to go through all of it. You've been here a long time throughout the day. You've been very kind and patient. And we're going to honor that by getting you out of here. The vendors have already been mentioned down the hallway. If there's any way that we can serve you or make things more comfortable for you, if you let us know, we'll do everything we can to make that happen. And we just appreciate you being here today for the, the kickoff of this series of lectures by Stripes, we are here. If you honor me with the standing up, we'll have a closing prayer. Not because I don't have a lot to say, but because you've heard a lot already. Amen. And uh, we want to give you some breaks here. Thanks. Yes, sir. Brother Jones just reminded me, I didn't even offer the area church a chance to make announcements. Uh, but if you have announcements that have to be made right now, we'll honor that. But we're going to be here tomorrow. And if you would give me the chance, I'll make all the announcements on tomorrow uh, so that we don't keep the people any longer. And I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but we have been, you've been patient, and I'm not going to betray that patience that you've had. But any urgent announcements, we will take those right now. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us today to participate in this lectureship series and for all of the speakers and participants that have made this such a wonderful day. We thank you for them who have come very distances. We thank you for those who have come from close by. Especially we thank you for the area attendees from all over this area. Congregations far and near uh, from throughout the area have come. We thank you for their being here today. We ask your blessing upon their return home. May we have the the heart to return tomorrow for another helping of what we received today. Forgive us our sins.